there's a ton of noise out there. So how do you get decision makers to pay attention to your brand? Start a podcast and invite your ideal clients to be guests on your show. Learn more at sweetfishmedia.com. You're listening to the B2B Growth Show, a podcast dedicated to helping B2B executives achieve explosive growth. Whether you're looking for techniques and strategies or tools and resources, you've come to the right place. I'm James Carberry. And I'm Jonathan Green. Let's get into the show. Welcome back to the B2B Growth Show. Today we are joined by Stephen Rosen. Stephen is an author, he's a coach, he's a speaker, and he is the founder of Star Results. Stephen, welcome to the show. Jonathan, thank you for having me. It's a, it's a pleasure to have you on the show today. You know, you have a you have a fantastic and prolific background, and we're going to be talking today about something that you know we always we talk a lot about strategy on the B two B Growth Show, and uh, and there's a whole other element to to that that sometimes doesn't get discussed as much strategy execution. But before we get into today's topic. Uh, what I'd like to do is maybe you can just tell our listeners a little about your background and what you and your team at Star Results are up to these days. Yeah, well, thank you. So at Star Results, we're working in a number of areas, and really our whole goal and mission is to help sales executives and their management teams crush their sales numbers. And, and we do it in a variety of ways. Uh, one, our belief is that leadership is the key to, to driving growth. And we, you know, we coach executives and and their managers. And with also the belief that sales managers, your frontline folks are the key to driving success in your organization. Uh, so we work with them one-on-one. We also, uh, really help them execute extremely well because, uh, we believe that's one of the key differences between, uh, mediocre success and, uh, you know, really having explosive growth and it's an explosive success. You know, we work in a number of industries, banking, uh, pharmaceutical is an area where I've come from. And, um, you know, we, we really um, are, are focused on the, the whole area of, um, you know, taking strategy, but making it happen and turning that into sales. Yeah, it almost should go without saying that that's a huge piece of the puzzle. I mean, if you just having a plan, just having a strategy, you know, exist out there in the ether it's not doing you any good without that follow through, without that execution. So why don't we start talking about today's topic then, and uh, and you can just kind of give us uh, the basics. We'll start with you know what is this idea of execution and what should it mean to people in the B two B space? Okay, well I, I guess the first question is is what is execution? Some people equate it with implementation, and, and there are similarities to that. You know, about a year ago, we started digging and asking uh, subscribers what their biggest challenges were. And interestingly enough, we said, "Okay, just tell us what your biggest challenges are outside making your sales numbers. And uh, as I said to you, that uh, a large portion of people said making our sales numbers. (laughs) Yeah, we got that right. And you're at least you're focused as uh, many of the sales managers and executives that subscribe. Uh, and the second thing that came up was executing. And we started to do some research on, on really this component of execution. And I have to say, in my days in industry, uh, you know, I was VP of sales and marketing and I was VP of sales. And I realized I probably wasn't the best strategist, but I was damn good at execution. And we, we actually outpaced our competition in many of the roles that I had. And, and looking at, you know, strategy, there's hundreds of books and articles in the area, and then you kind of get down to, um, you know, strategy execution or business execution, and there's very few um, pieces of work in that area. Mm-hmm. One of the interesting ones that I saw was in um, Harvard Business Review uh, a couple of years back, March 2015. Uh, you know, they talked about making strategy work and how to avoid some of the, the pitfalls uh, and really execute brilliantly. And th- there was an amazing, uh, well, interesting, I should say amazing. But it, <laughs> we're we're going to manage expectations, right? And yes. Inter- interesting. Yes. Well, I found it interesting. And, uh, you know, this was a global survey. You know, HBR is a great source. And they had surveyed 400 uh, CEOs and asked them, you know, what their biggest challenge was. And, uh, you know, these were across the world, U.S., Europe, Asia, even Canada, eh? And uh, they had a list of 80 issues, which included stuff like, you know, geopolitical instability, which we know is big these days, top line growth, uh, innovation, uh, recruiting people, uh, talent retention. And the number one issue that these CEOs highlighted was execution. 
And, uh, you know, the challenge is, and what I've seen in my days of industry is companies are very good at developing strategies. They have great processes. Uh, they're rigorous, you know, positioning, branding, but they neglect after they've done their, their marketing plans to really think, how are we going to make this happen? Yeah. Well, and, and it almost seems like the, the strategy part is the fun part. I mean, you're getting to, you're getting to create, you're getting to think outside the box, you're getting to do these things that are more conceptual, but then you have to talk about, okay, now, now let's put in the real work, you know, now, now the rubber needs to meet the pavement. And you're right. And uh, I equate strategy to being sexy. That's the sexy work. Yep. And or the fun work. And execution is mired in details, right? And no one wants to get mired in details. But uh, as I've been told, and a lot of the the work on the execution side does sit with the sales force. And um, you know, it's it requires a discipline. And um, you know, just to sort of uh, you know maybe even define. Uh, execution, how I define it is, um, is really about, it's a discipline. So execution is a discipline of getting the most important things done. And I'll actually add one more word. Well, yeah. Okay. So a lot of companies get very complicated and are doing 10 or 15 different things. My belief is focus. And if you can pick two or three things and do them extremely well, I've always had great success in, in my career in working with clients for the last 14 years. To me, focus is key because sometimes companies try to do too many things and they become a, a jack of all trades and a master of none. Mm-hmm. So, so what you find, and um, I, I'm sure your listeners, if we, if we could speak directly to them and said, okay, do you guys develop marketing plans every year? And the answer is probably 98% or more uh, would say yes. And then do they develop execution plans? And kind of people look at you a little bit puzzled saying, what are you talking about? And if you look at the time uh, spent on, on developing plans, which could be several months, uh, the time of developing execution plans is, is negligible. But yet we spend 95% of our time executing the marketing plan, yet we have no plan on how to execute it. And marketing just doesn't think of uh, execution. They think of strategy, tactics, and then kind of lob it over the fence to the sales group. So, you know, we developed a, a, a process because in most things, even in sales, if you break things down to a process, you get greater success. And I'm not a process guy. I'm a people guy. But uh, sometimes you need to break things down into a process. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and you have this idea that in uh, an effective strategy execution, there are three critical steps. Let's, let's talk about what are those three critical steps. Yeah. And, and the first one I, I touched upon, which is really if you don't have an execution, I mean, if you don't have anything down on paper, nothing's going to happen. So I, I start with uh, building an execution plan, which looks at what's critical for success, whether two or three critical success factors, and then bringing the team in. And when I say the team, it's your sales marketing team really to align on what's critical. OK, because part of the, the you know, key for execution is that everyone's rowing the boat in the same direction. So, you know, we'll build a plan with the team. We'll make sure everyone's aligned. And then we we do a couple things with that plan is it's not just, you know, strategies and tactics, it's critical success factors. How are we going to get there? And then we get very granular. OK, and the granularity is about building a balanced scorecard, which in many ways equates to execution, but really taking your your critical success factors, then how are you going to measure that you're doing them? Because there's no way you can know if you're executing unless you have some very well-defined metrics. So we'll build that in up front. And then we work with the team uh, because it's really up to the team of sales managers and marketing managers to lead. And unless you have a group who's leading execution and working with the sales reps and you know the product managers to make sure that everything's happening, it tends to drop even if you have a plan. So there's a leadership component. And the last component, so plan, align, lead, and then it's really about measuring and reviewing. And companies, you know, some companies will do quarterly business reviews, and I've written a number of articles in that area. So it's really about going back on a periodic basis, once a quarter. I have one client who's doing it once every two months because they really want to accelerate but going back and looking at how are we doing against our metrics and how are we going to get them on track or exceed them in the next two months or three months. 
Yeah. So it's very simplified. I mean, the, the, there's lots of uh, detail and granularity that goes into it. And sometimes uh, what I've found is companies are, are more challenged to do granular thinking than strategic thinking, right? Because, oh, God, yeah. I, I don't give me the details, right? It's too complicated. Uh, but the only way you're going to execute well is if you've broken down your steps uh, of what you're going to do. Um, and then really find ways to, to measure those and, uh, and then review that you're on track or, you know, course correction. Yeah. And I like this idea because it is, it's not necessarily the, the most, when you, when you're talking to someone about this, it's not going to sound like the most fun thing in the world, but you know, at a certain point, I mean, you have to do the nitty gritty stuff. You have to look at these, at these numbers, you have to sort of put in the effort and I don't think there are as many people talking about that because, you know, it's not the, necessarily the content that gets a lot of traction out there. It's not the stuff that's wildly shared across social media channels like, oh, you know, do the work, uh, you know, do the do the detail oriented stuff like no one wants to yes. do it. So it's important, I think, to talk about it. Right. And, you know, I learned something very interesting in my career. We, we had hired a competitor. Uh, I guess he was a, a marketer slash key account guy. At a senior level, and uh, I brought him over, and he, he says, you know, our company at the time and his old company had the same strategies. When he looked at both, he says, we, we have similar strategies. And what he had said to me is the difference of who's going to be successful is an execution. That was probably 20-odd 20, 20 years ago. And, um, you know, I, I really do believe that companies have very good stra- – you know, we're very good at strategy, uh, formulation, development, and building that. And really what I look at it, if, hey, if you look at the very simple equation of strategy, brilliant strategy, plus excellence and execution equals success. I'm sure we've seen that. I'm sure conceptually most people would believe, hey, you know, that's a very, you know, I, I agree with that equation. Well, if you assume that everyone's equally as good on the strategy component, but most companies suffer and, and you know, there's numbers from 60 to 90 percent of companies fail to execute their strategies. Well, if you're the one who is executing, one, you're going to crush your competition and you're going to gain market share. So to me, that's that's kind of the ultimate competitive advantage. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, well, Stephen, one of the things that I love to do um, on the show, if we can, is to kind of leave our listeners with some actionable pieces of advice. So, you know, I know there are definitely some things you've touched on uh, in today's episode, but, you know, if we had to you know, leave them with something or, or a couple pieces of advice that they can go and, and take back to their company, take back to their team right now. What do you think that would be? Because I'm, I'm sure there are, are some listeners thinking, oh, well, you know, as part of our strategy, of course, there is an execution plan baked into that. But, you know, maybe not necessarily to the extent that you would say, yes, this is this is execution right here. So what are some things that you can leave our listeners with uh, if they want to get things started, you know, here today, now, after this episode? Yeah. Uh, okay. So number one and um, is knowing what are your critical success factors? You know, it's really bringing those down to, I, I like the number three. It's a nice kind of round number. So what are the three key things you need to do that are going to drive success in your organization? Whether it's, you know, your sales reps targeting the right accounts, whether it's execution of key marketing plans, really define those. But in the old days when I was VP of sales, I defined them by myself. Bring your team in and collectively build those three so everyone's aligned on those. A. Number two is saying, okay, how are we going to get there? How are we going to achieve those uh, key success factors or critical success factors? And build 10 bullet points or eight bullet points on how you're going to do each and then define a metric for each one of those, and it could be not each one of the eight, but at least a metric to see how you're doing on a number of those uh, uh, key hows, right? So what, how, how are you going to measure it, and then communicate it and, and get out there and periodically review. So it, it can be a very simple process, but uh, as uh, I forget who it was, um, you know, if, if companies could do it, they would have already done it. There's a real, there's a real discipline required to set it in place. And even uh, a number of the companies that we rolled it out with this year, they're so busy being busy mm. that uh, y- you need a champion. And in many cases for the first half of the year, I've championed it within the organization with support, obviously, of senior management. But 
just because one organization is in the midst of mergers, one has had some turnover issues, uh, one has lost some product exclusivities. So the business unit head or sales and marketing VPs are all challenged with busy stuff that they need, you know, they, they need some help making this happen. But once you get it rolling, it becomes part of how you do business. So there are some easy steps that your listeners can take. And I encourage that. As I always say, nothing happens unless there's a plan. So if you're not building an execution plan, quite simply follow my three steps to get there. Yep. Makes a lot of sense, Stephen. I think there is some tremendous content for this episode. I'm getting a lot out of it. I know our listeners are going to get a lot out of it. And if any of those listeners are interested in connecting with you after today's episode, what's the best way for them to go about doing that? Well, they can come to my website, which is www.starresults2rs.com. They can reach me at Stephen with a V at starresults.com. And of course, I'm on LinkedIn and, and all social media. We have, I have a, my, my blog, which I call the sales management blog, has I, I think over five or six articles on the whole area of strategy execution. So, you know, go check out the blog. It's, uh, you know, I've won a number of awards uh, in that area in terms of uh, sales blogs. And there's some really good content that's free of charge and that you can kind of uh, say, hey, you know, this really uh, resonates with me. And feel free to reach out uh, to me directly. You've got my email address, even at starresults.com. And I'd be glad to speak to any of your listeners and see how we can get them on track to crush their sales numbers. Fantastic. Stephen, thanks again so much for your time today. It was a pleasure having you on the show. Likewise, Jonathan. And uh, here's for explosive growth. To ensure that you never miss an episode of the B2B Growth Show, subscribe to the show in iTunes or your favorite podcast player. This guarantees that every episode will get delivered directly to your device. If you'd like to connect with B2B executives from all over the world, make sure to join our private Facebook community. There are some incredible conversations happening inside this group. To join, visit b2bgrowthshow.com slash FB. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time.